Good morning, Rebels, and welcome back to my life. All right, another editing grammar writing video. Here we go. Who and whom. Yeah, whom, that weird little alternative version of who with the M at the end. What the heck is up with that freak of nature? First, I want to let you know that whom doesn't actually mean anything different than who. It's not like lie, lay, and laid, which are three words that mean kind of the same thing, but actually have different applications. The point is that in today's day and age, you could go your entire life without ever saying whom, and like 99.99% .99 of people would never notice. But there is one advantage to using whom, and it's to make yourself sound like a hipster grammar Nazi. Why would I want that, you ask? Well, the only people who want that already know the answer to that question. Even when something is virtually never used, it just feels good to some people knowing how it's supposed to be used. And if you're the kind of person who likes getting into arguments on the internet about spelling and grammar, and let's face it, if you're a rebel, then you probably are that kind of person, it's helpful to have the security of speaking about something you actually know about. Also, if you're in an internet debate and you seem to be losing, you can always go with an ad hominem attack and say, I don't even know why I'm arguing with this point with somebody who doesn't know the difference between who and whom, and then run away air humping. Air humping. Okay, so the difference between between who and whom gets into the subject and object of a sentence. Subject and object is another thing people get really confused about, but to put it simply, the subject of a sentence is the one doing something in that sentence. The object is the thing that something is being done to. The way I always remember this is by imagining the school principal giving me a call. Uh, Mr. Robinson, we need to speak on the subject of your daughter. Right away, I know my daughter has done something, and the subject of the sentence is the thing that's doing something. Conversely, you can always remember what the object of a sentence is by thinking of the term objectified. When we objectify somebody, whether it's a woman or an artist or a celebrity, we are doing something to them. Therefore, they're the object of the sentence because they are receiving the action. So in summary, subjects do things, objects have things done to them. How does this relate to who and whom? Well, these are both pronouns, meaning words that cover up a proper noun in a sentence. And if you're covering up the subject of a sentence, you use who. And if you're covering up the object of a sentence, you use whom. Garrett punched a mime. That's not an example, that's just something I did on Saturday. Let's take the example, Garrett punched a grizzly bear. Garrett is the subject because he's the brave man who punched a ferocious bear. The grizzly bear is the object because it's the unimpressive creature getting punched in the face. So taking those one at a time, we could replace the subject and say, who punched a grizzly bear? Or we could replace the object and say, Garrett punched whom? Or replace them both and say, who punched whom? If you're really in mystery about the punching that just occurred. Okay, so that's the explanation of the rules behind it, but there's a chance you're still not a hundred percent on when to use who and whom. Fortunately, there's an even easier way to remember this. The only reason I didn't give it to you up front is because I wanted you to have some understanding of the rules behind it. But when you're writing a sentence and you're not sure whether to use who or whom, try replacing it with the words he or him. Which one is appropriate? If you'd use he, use who. If you'd use him, use whom. See, we all use he and him so often that we know the correct use based on instinct, which is why they make great tools in determining whether we should use who or whom. It can still be hard to keep track of in casual conversation, but remember, like 99.99% .99 of the people you'll talk to in your entire life will care or know the difference and they'll probably think you're weird if you use the word whom. But if you're writing and you want to be all proper, you can use the he, him, who, whom swap to find out which is the correct one. By the way, a quick note, please don't be offended by my gender specificity. I use he and him because they're structurally very similar to who and whom, not because I support the patriarchy. She and her are also perfectly usable, but I don't because of their conjunctive differences to the other words. Hope this cleared things up for you rebels. If you're more confused than when I started, I apologize. Tomorrow I'm giving my first weekly Friday writing update on the editing process of Rebel Yell. I hope you'll come back to check it out or subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss it. And until then, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye!